Okay, let's talk about how the classic 1980s board game from Milton Bradley, Scotland Yard, is a series of interesting graph problems. And we got to do this quickly because I need to wrap this up because the Super Bowl is kicking off within the next five minutes. So we're going to go fast. Uh, so let's start with the obligatory 1980s board game commercial. Look at this. They're hot on the trail of the sinister Mr. X. Oh, this looks amazing. You're hanging out with your friends. You're chasing a criminal mastermind. Working together as Scotland Yard, you scour the city until you trap him. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, what a great game. I have very, very fond memories of that from back in the day. It was sort of like the Goonies. You're hanging out with your friends. You're tracking an international criminal mastermind named Mr. X. Of course, it has to be Mr. X because it was the 80s and it didn't occur to anyone that a woman could be an international criminal mastermind. Um, so it was always Mr. X. So you're tracking Mr. X through London, and let me sort of show you what the board game actually looked like. You've got a few versions of this in here. The one we're using is Scotland Yard Big, or SYBig.png. This is what the game board looked like. So you can see you've got um, nodes 1 through 199, and they're connected by a bunch of edges, and the edges are either yellow, green, or red. And essentially... Yellow is taxi, green is bus, and red is underground subway. So, for example, if you're down here at node 162, you can only get to 136 by taxi or 175 by taxi. Those are your only two transportation options from here. Those are, those are yellow. I know it's not showing up as like a vibrant yellow on here, but, you know, trust me, those are yellow edges. You can see the little key down here. Um, whereas if you're here, you know, so I don't know, say you're here at 107, you still have yellow edges to 91, 106, and 119, but you also have a green edge by bus to get from 107 to 161, over here to 105, and over here to 72. So, in general, the bus edges take you further than just the taxi edges. Then you've also got some of these things, like up here, number one, this is both bus, so it's got green edges. It's also taxi, so it's got a couple of yellow edges, and it has underground subway, so it has these big uh, red edges that take you to other spots on the London uh, underground that'll take you around this area of, you know, somewhere in central London. Um, the game also has these um, special boat edges that only Mr. X can use. We're going to kind of kind of skip over those for now. Um, they There's some interesting strategy with how you use the special mystery tickets for these. We're, we're going to skip that. So basically that's what we've got. Now how do we know how all these things are connected? Well, if you said a giant text file, you're right. So this text file, scottmap.txt, which is in your, in your starter package, 199, that is the number of nodes. So numbers 1 through 199 are represented. 469, that's for edges. So that's telling us there's 469 edges, which makes sense. 470 lines in the file. One header line, 469 edges. Fantastic. And the edges are labeled 18T. That means... From 1 to 8, there's an edge that's a taxi edge. And then from 1 to 9, there's a taxi edge. 1 to 58, there's a bus edge. 1 to 46, there's an underground edge. There's also a bus edge from 1 to 46 um, as well. So you have sort of multiple types of transportation you can use when you're playing the actual game that matters because Mr. X has more or less an unlimited number of tokens. The players all have basically limited numbers of um, tokens uh, for different types of transportation. It's unclear why international criminal masterminds have a larger budget than Scotland Yard, but, you know, I guess it's due... To, I'll, just, I'll just cite budget cuts as the reason. So, uh, so there we go. We've got our map. We've got our text file that describes the underlying structure of this map. Uh, there's one other file we have, scottmap2.txt. Basically, this is the XY coordinates of where everything's located. This is saying I've got 199 points in here. 1 is at 143.45, and 2 is at 329.49. So these are XY coordinates. Uh, let's see how these map. So over here, uh, 1 is at 143 in the X and 45 in the Y. There's this weird convention in computing that 0, 0 is usually in the top left. Uh, I believe, unless it was an urban legend that I read, it actually has something to do with really, really old monitors where it would sort of refresh the screen line by line, but starting at the top. And so in these, all of your graphics drawing would draw into like a big memory buffer of what each sort of 
pixel on each row of the screen needed to look like, and so for all of that, you had to uh, sort of start at the top and work your way down, and for some reason that's become the convention. So anyway, 0, 0 is up here, so 143.45, uh, 329, 49, and so on. How do we get these points? I don't know, I just went and clicked on them. It's approximately the middle, but not exactly the middle. And so what your code is going to do, let me go ahead and run, I'll, I'll run my uh, reference implementation here. So I'm not asking you to do anything that I haven't done instead of grading uh, over the last week. So you run it, and it's going to basically display this map in a, a J panel uh, inside a J frame. And so you can say, oh, I'd like to select the uh, node for Mr. X. I want Mr. X to start at 2. And so it sort of highlights this in some color. And then it's saying, well, 20 and 10, those are the places Mr. X could reach in one move. Um, where could Mr. X be after two moves? Well, Mr. X could be in any of these locations. How about three moves? These locations. How about four moves? Those locations. And finally, five moves. And the reason we're capping it at five moves is a um, me uh, mechanic of the game is that Mr. X only surfaces about every five moves. And so other than that... Um, Mr. X basically chooses where to travel and writes it down in a logbook and then gives the player some information, the type of transportation that he used. We're sort of skipping over all of that and just starting with the basics of the graph. So one move, two moves, three moves, four moves, five moves. Let's pick a different start node. How about node 7? Ah, so this is where Mr. X could be five moves after node 7. You know, so five moves could get all the way down to here. That's fantastic. And then this little... um checkbox here show all moves when you click this it'll basically show everything so this is one moves plus two moves let's I don't know let's try three there's three moves and finally four moves um, and all five moves so this 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 show all moves shows sort of everything all at once I probably need to change the widths of these little int overlapping interleaved circles to sort of make this this whole thing look a little bit uh, better or cleaner. I haven't gotten around to that yet. You you can go ahead and change that um, for your thing. And so, how is all of this working? Well, let's uh, let's check this out. You've got your Scotland Yard frame, which extends J frame. You've got your canvas inside of it, very similar to our previous GUI stuff. Uh, these are all your key instance variables. And if you look at the beginning of the constructor for a Scotland Yard frame. This you don't have to worry about, final image. It's actually reading that image file, so that's what's going to get painted over the canvas with all of your circling and highlighting going over it. Now, Scotland Yard's all of a read position points, point map. So let's look at what this method does. So it doesn't do anything right now, it just returns an empty map, but it's got the documentation. What that's going to do is actually read this file, um, so it'll, it'll map one, which is the name of the node, and not one, the integer. You just go ahead and read it as a string. Just use the scanner and keep it as a string. Um, these are the points. Turn that into a point. What kind of point? Well, in Java, there's there's just a point class. Uh, I think it's imported. It's not imported in here. Just go ahead and use the built-in point class. I think it's going to be imported up here. Yeah, java.awt.point. It's got constructors. You can look at the documentation for it. Uh, it's a very good class for what you need to do with it. So that's the first thing uh, you're going to need to implement. Where did that go? Is uh, reading the position points and returning this map from the string. So like 437, whatever, the name of the location to the point, uh, the point representing the XY coordinates of where that particular point is located and then returning a map of that. And this even very helpfully creates an empty map, and then returns it, and then you're going to put your code in here to go ahead and sort of read out of this file. Now you've also got read graph from file. Uh, this is reading from an input stream rather than a file name. It doesn't really matter. Uh, for the other one, you would just take the file name and create a file input stream out of it. This is creating one of your very own graphs. So this is the graph class that you wrote last week, and what you're going to do is read that out of the input stream and then return this. And what does the input stream look like? Well, it looks like this. So you're going to create a scanner or something like that to kind of read through and parse all of this. And for our purposes, we actually don't care if it's taxi, bus, or underground. We just care that there's some connection there. So you can actually just put them all in there, you know, with uh, with a weight of one. Um, and let's see. Uh, and finally, 
you have... Right, this is what does all the actual work. Get next five possible moves. So this is going to return a map from integer, where integer is the move number, and a set of strings, where this set of strings is the set of all of the locations within the game, so 17, 34, 58, whatever, where the token, the, the player's token, could reach after the given number of moves. So for example, uh, if we go back to our, where's my example? Oh, I have multiple examples open. Well, isn't that great? So, you know, you can imagine this map. One maps to the a set of these strings, 6, 17, and 42. Two maps to these strings. Three maps to just the ones in blue. In fact, if I shut off show all moves, it's sort of showing it more clearly. Um, um, so it just sort of maps to all of this stuff. Uh, and so that's what you're going to do. And once again, we're capping it at uh, five moves because it doesn't really make sense uh, to do more than five because Mr. X has to surface and the worst case scenario at least every five moves. I think at the beginning of the game Mr. X surfaces on like the third move or something like that so the players kind of have some idea where Mr. X is located so that's why we're capping it at five and that's what this map means. The first integer is the move number so the only values in there are going to be one, two, three, four, five and then this set of strings. This is a set of the string locations where everything is. So those are the three key methods get the next five positions, read the graph from the file, read the position points, and then you will need to make some modifications to this code here. If you look down here at the paint method, canvas is your J panel. If you look at its paint method, um, the first thing it's doing is drawing that image that we read, basically this image. Uh, and then what you're going to have to do is go and look through all of your various data structures to decide what's wrong. I left this in there for a color scheme, um, you, you could, but you can do the colors kind of however however you want them, as long as you're using a different color for, you know, each number of moves. Oh, you know what would be really cool would be to change the colors of these labels to match its move number. Ooh, that would be really cool. Uh, I didn't have time to do that, but, but you can do that if you'd like. You can also make this sort of whatever color or styling you'd like. Um, let's see. Right, so you're going to have to do some stuff in here to sort of go look at this moves. This is the map. Uh, to look at the point map as well. Um, you can see a lot of these are highlighted because they're not used yet. We're creating them, but we're not really using them yet. And then num moves, that actually gets, uh, this is an instance variable, but it actually gets changed. Some of the event handlers are already written for you. Like, for example, um, you know, this is just a radio button group for all of this stuff. These actually automatically, the, the values get changed, although you'll have to figure out how to display it. Uh, and so that is your task, tying together the work we did with graphs with a um, nice little visualization, and we're solving a small portion of a really interesting board game from back in the olden days. And one thing we'll probably talk about somehow, somewhere, at some point, is given a location for Mr. X and the five player detectives, is it guaranteed that they can catch Mr. X within five moves before he surfaces again? So you'd have to look at all the possible places that Mr. X could be, uh, one move out, two moves out, three moves out, four moves out, and five moves out, and then for each of those, you'd have to look at all the possible places that each player could be, multiplied by all the possibilities for all of the players. So it's actually a fairly big problem, and it's exponential, um, but it might not be that big. It might be actually solvable... Uh, I'm not really sure. So, you know, is it possible to guarantee that the players uh, can catch Mr. X? I didn't have time to really work on that, but it's something that we could potentially talk about. Holy crap, uh, kickoff was like 10 minutes ago. I got to go watch the Super Bowl. Okay, well, thanks for listening.